It's probably Spider Man in the background. <laughs> it is Spider Man though. <laughs> Whatever. With great power comes great responsibility. Uh, Sable's out there watching Spider Man, like from two thousand and it's finishing right now though. Yeah, it is almost oh, over. Oh, but we're about to hear um Nickelback. And they say that a hero. Okay, anyway. Welcome to Films from the Phantom Zone, your podcast about failed and forgotten comic book movies. My name's Ronaldo. I'm joined by... Berto. And uh, I skipped that one part because we got to move. We got a lot to talk about. We are here doing the review for Spider-Man No Way Home. Yep. I'm so glad. You know what? Like, if we weren't doing reviews and we saw this movie, we'd be like, fuck, we should do reviews. Yeah, like, this is a movie <laughs> that, like, you have to talk about. Yeah, I'm really glad we're doing this, is my point. <laughs> We've done, in the last month, The Amazing Spider-Man from 2012. Yes. And The Amazing Spider-Man 2 from 2014. Yes. Go listen to those episodes. Those are out right now. Upcoming, also, we have a Christmas special coming out on Christmas Eve for y'all. Uh, so, anyway, Spider-Man No Way Home, out in theaters. This is a spoiler free slash spoiler review we're separating it as usual if you're new here yeah. the so, spoiler free section is probably going to be uh shorter than usual yeah i feel like everything <laughs> in this movie is a spoiler it's got a lot you know expectations were really high there was a lot of speculation oh i forgot we did a speculation episode on this we did and we that's did a, the first time we did something like that yeah we did a trailer breakdown so if you want to listen to that that's out too for the trailer it was like the last trailer for this movie the right last trailer even though like more shit came out afterwards yeah 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 so again, we're going to do a very minimal amount of background talk, non-spoilers. So if you haven't seen the movie, you're safe for now. We will tell you when to stop listening, and then we'll just go right into spoilers. Right? Yeah. Sound good. Also, there are timestamps, so you can jump to that section, or you can stop, or if you stopped, you're going to know when to come back. That's all in the episode description. You just swipe down. It's all right there in the notes. Oh, and lastly, we are live on Twitch. All these episodes are recorded on Twitch. If you like the show, you want to be a part of it, you want to hang out with us while we make the podcast, record it, and be a part of it, then you can do that. There's always a hop and chat most Monday nights on twitch.tv slash filmsfrompz. Let's get started. Berto, did I forget anything? As far as that intro goes, I don't think so. Cool, 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 cool. Let's get going. Honestly, the only background I have for this movie is this seems kind of like the product, like the end product of Sony spending so many years wanting to make a Sinister Six movie. They have like a hard-on to try and make that happen. I don't know if that's like a leftover of your rad juice. You know what yeah. I mean? And this movie is the closest that we've gotten to that. Yeah. And again, we're not talking spoilers. So no. we're only referencing things that are in the trailers without confirming nor denying anything yeah. speculatory. The thing is right? not too much we can say as far as non-spoiler goes. I can definitely say that I like the movie. Okay, we're not there yet, Birdo. I like it. <laughs> but um I I'm, I'm talking about like you go back to Spider Man three and they're like more villains. Like team ups. Right. Let's do team ups. You know what I mean? Amazing Spider Man two, we were just talking at length about that film. Mm. And that's the one with all the starter packs at the end where they're like, Hey, we got the Sinister Six coming, I want to make a team of six people. Here's their starter packs. <laughs> Here's how it's gonna happen. Go downstairs, find a couple scientists and just give them these things, and then we're gonna have a Sinister Six movie. Yeah. So, obviously, like, the Amazing Spider-Man movies got canceled. Email leaks, bad reaction from fans, bad reception from critics. Yes. I want to say Andrew Garfield did a little bit of a, uh, not shit talking, but, like, he was he didn't have, like, great things to say about the studio interference with that movie as well. I kind of don't remember that. He said something, and then Sony was, like, upset about it. I think it was in the leaked emails, actually. Oh, I kind of do remember this now. Yeah. Uh, but not specifically. But at the end of the day, it's like, you know, that's what got them talking. And we talked about this. That's what got them talking to Marvel about kind of joining forces, right? Yes. But it leaves Sony with one movie like every two, three years while Marvel, you know, they're hitting their stride at around 2012 to 2014. And they're making three to four movies a year. Yeah. And they're like, <laughs> how do we compete? Well, you don't because you don't have the same roster of yeah. characters. You don't have the same ips they definitely have the amount of characters to be able to do that if it was done well the issue is they weren't really doing it well i mean like obviously like spider-man has like one of the biggest rosters right in his own corner but it doesn't stack up with like the rest of the marvel universe no but there still are other heroes in like the spider-man i want to say universe but i mean it's like a still a shared universe at marvel it's like, it's like his corner his of corner, marvel like there's yeah. other heroes there too but it is 
mainly Spider-Man and then his, like, you know, rogues gallery. Right. And that's why Sony's, like, trying to make, or was trying to make, a bunch of villain movies. A Sinister Six movie. An Aunt May fucking movie, right? Aunt like, May. what can we pop, what more can we squeeze out of this intellectual property? I, you know, now when they're working with Marvel, this is why we have Venom and Venom 2 and Morbius. And right. there might be a Craven movie coming out, right? Which is odd. Yes. But <laughs> <laughs> if you go back two years ago, remember they had a Fallen Out. The deal was canceled. Mm-hmm. It was off the table. There, This movie, Spider-Man No Way Home, or whatever it would have been called, was going to be... It would have been divergent at this point. Yeah, it would have been like in Sony's whatever the hell like they everything have. established is fine but they would no longer be able to make any references to mcu characters yeah on that um that sony breakup with marvel uh apparently <laughs> tom holland talked to bob Iger. yeah so that's one of the things that kind of ended it is tom holland like called bob Iger drunk drunk he had a uh, drunk and, conversation yep. with the and CEO of Disney. It was either he called him drunk or like he was he was he, waiting he got, on a call and he, he was call drinking back, and, and he, he happened got a call to be back. drinking yep. and he's like and then so he just like started bawling crying was like please make it happen. <laughs> <laughs> the thing is is like so what happened after that was they signed one more deal for one more movie and Spider Man gets to make one more guest appearance in a Marvel film. Which uh, still hasn't happened yet, right? Hasn't happened. And we don't know if it's going to happen at this point. And Marvel is going to get a little bit more money from Sony films. Okay. Right? For Sony Spider-Man movies, which is what Sony didn't want. But <laughs> if you look at the box office returns thus far. Oh, it's bro, I don't, <laughs> insane. I don't care how much money Sony has to share with Marvel. It's worth it. They're still making more money than they've ever had. They're almost getting Endgame money. Yes. Uh, this movie, just a few minutes ago, we were just talking about this, has surpassed Infinity War for the biggest opening, for the biggest weekend opening, and is now number two all time behind Endgame. Keep in mind, That's... this is during COVID still. Yeah, and it's COVID. There's a new variant. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, Spider-Man might be the reason why that's spreading so rapidly. Uh, who knows? But uh, <laughs> So if it's any sign, like... Keep on keeping on, like stay on track, work together, share profits, because it's both working. companies are going to make much more money working together than separate. The only thing and they need to learn that is if Sony gets greedy. That's the thing. If yeah. they're like, well, you know, we want that 20% or whatever we're giving Marvel. Then to calm down, like calm down. You're breaking box office records here. Like right. stay with the status quo. I think new deals have kind of been worked out because now Sony wants to make three more Spider-Man movies. Yep. Um, and I think they're working with Marvel in order to do that. So I think they're going to keep on in this direction. But things could change. Don't get me wrong. But I think the big box office is what's going to help. And I think Tom Holland's trying to uh, get some more money out of this because he keeps talking about uh, quitting. I mean, we'll see. Uh, yeah. <laughs> he's I, very I think he's back just, and forth on it, too. He's just playing hardball. He's only been yeah. in like 10 movies. Um, like, calm down. <laughs> yeah. Another thing is um, after Amazing Spider-Man 2... And this story has been circulating for a while, but it's, like, out there again. Apparently, Amy Pascal went to Kevin Feige to ask him for advice for The Amazing Spider-Man 3. And Kevin Feige basically said, um, hey, let us make a movie. That's my advice. That's how this started? And she reportedly threw a sandwich at him. Oh, I remember hearing this, yeah, yeah, at one point. (laughs) She's a weird person, man. She does not seem like... Like, from what I hear, like, you know, she has good ideas and she, right. she runs a company pretty well. But, like, she just seems off, like, in interviews. I feel like this is leftover Sony juices piling up where they're like, hey, we still want that Sinister Six film. How can we kind of do it? I also feel like it's them going, we want more Spider-Man characters. How can we make our old universes relevant again? How yeah. can we, like, maybe even have potential spinoffs? from this right yeah i've always felt like that was the case and here's the thing that might work it (laughs) it might let's let's move on yeah uh all right cool let's get into the next segment of the show our review without spoilers this is a non-spoiler review you are safe to keep listening if you haven't watched the movie that's okay we will give you a a nice long warning uh when we start spoiling the movie overall thoughts then berto what you got i liked it a lot i really enjoyed this movie that's all you have to say. I mean, without <laughs> spoilers, kind of. Um, you saw this movie twice. I know. Performances were good. Okay. Willem Dafoe killed it. He was mm-hmm. fantastic. Even Jamie Foxx's Electro. I was impressed yeah. with uh, what they did with him. Yeah. 
the guy that plays Kurt Connors, uh, he it was I'm, mostly the same. I'll be honest, I didn't think that was him. We'll get to it, but I thought you, it was like <laughs> I th- I thought they didn't bring back. Uh, oh, you didn't think it was him? Rice uh, uh, Ilfen, what's his name? I don't remember his name. It's something he, like he's that. He's got an odd name though. Yeah, yeah, he's like Swedish or I don't and know. And then um, who's the dude that plays Sandman? Tom Hayden Church. Thomas yes. Hayden Church. Yeah, that sounds right. I'm surprised they, they actually brought him back too. Same. Also, he looks like he didn't age a day. Could have been de-aged. True. But. <laughs> and then we also have, you know, Benedict Cumberbatch. Yeah. Who's always amazing as Doctor Strange. Tom Holland, good. Zendaya, good. Marissa Tomei. Marissa Tomei, amazing. Yeah. I love her. Everybody's performance was great. I'm glad that they brought these actors back from their respective movies to play these villains again. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I forgot to mention Alfred Molina. But Alfred oh. Molina. I watched some of their interviews mm-hmm. where they, they had Willem Dafoe, Alfred Molina, and Jamie Foxx together. And I didn't realize how large Alfred Molina is. He is like six foot two. I didn't know that. And Willem Dafoe is like five foot like eight or something or nine. And so is Jamie Foxx. And you put them all next to each other like in a row. And I'm he like, like towers over them. He towers and his like head is much larger. And he's like, he's kind of like wide set. I'm like, this man looks like a football player. <laughs> like <laughs> Alfred Molina is kind of a large man. <laughs> wow. I don't mean that like he's like chunky no, or no, anything. I, he's I, just just, like, I never realized like how big he is. He, he looks like he got like scaled up digitally next to like uh, Willem Dafoe. Willem Dafoe is like very skinny. Yeah. I guess in the Spider-Man movies, you wouldn't really notice that because he's got the arms that are carrying yeah, around, so and, he looks taller. And they do, like... Camera tricks. And... Yeah, they're usually just kind of shot on their own, too. So, anyway, I just thought that was funny. But I uh, didn't watch that interview because I was trying to avoid, like, all media surrounding yeah. this movie. It was They were fun. We were just kind of chit-chatting. Alfred Molina's like, I am classically trained! <laughs> Oh, is he one of those actors that went to, He's, like... Yep, yep, to, like, a proper, like, British film. That's so fucking British. <laughs> Acting school <laughs> for the theater. <laughs> but, yeah, performances were good. I love the score of this movie. Did you know... I'll talk about it later. It's not a spoiler, but, like, I don't... I just don't want to divulge too much information that you might catch on your own. So, like, I don't want to talk about, like, musical cues. Obviously, they're, they're there, and you'll yeah. hear them. But I've got some little, some little bits I okay. want to talk about. All right, and we'll get to it in the yeah, spoiler yeah. section. I'm yeah, 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 yeah. Overall, for me, I fucking love this movie, and I think paused for dramatic effect. What? I was gonna ask, did it blow you away? Yes. Oh yeah. shit! Blown away. I think. <laughs> I think this is a near perfect film, and I'm not underselling that at all. And here's the thing: I saw this movie today for the first time. Today's Monday at the time of recording. Right. Um, the movie came out on Thursday. Obviously, I was away. I went to Puerto Rico for the weekend and i wanted to try to finagle seeing it there because i also have a lot of like fun memories of spider-man in puerto rico i was in puerto rico the summer that the first spider-man movie came out okay. i may have seen it there i don't know but i played the shit out of the first spider-man movie video game um yeah. with like my cousins and shit we played that all summer long so like for whatever reason those two things are kind of like attached for me but anyway we couldn't make it work so we went first showing we could as soon as we got here. And I like having a little bit of space between watching the movie and reviewing the movie because you need time to kind of digest it. A lot of times you're still kind of like on that initial emotional kind of response to the film. Um, right. And you haven't really objectively thought about it. So I hesitate in saying that it's a near perfect film. But that is how I feel right now. And it's been like seven hours since I saw it. Yeah. I think it's a near perfect movie. No, And like without giving away too much, there was a few times in the movie where I was just like, this feels like surreal. Like, I don't feel like I'm actually sitting down watching a movie that's actually been made right now because this is like, it's too good. Were you were you like ascending to heaven? Is that what it, you're saying? It felt like <laughs> it felt like I was leaving my body. In the <laughs> you were having a... Out of like, body there's, experience, there's no yeah. Fucking way. Like, like Doctor Strange did that to you, and you're ethereal. <laughs> like I have form. to be dreaming right now because there's no way they made a movie that I enjoy this much right now. It had been a minute since I see something that exciting. Right. I think. I mean, and it's exciting for yeah a number of reasons that we can't talk about yet. But okay, let me work it back a little bit. My expectations for this film were not that high. My expectations were middling. Like okay. I was excited. I was trying to kind of control my excitement, but at the same time. As the news of, like, multiverse shenanigans was coming out, and we talked about this. Yeah. As that news was coming out for this movie, it was going to bring back characters from other Spider-Man universes. And there was the... Uh, again, I'm not going to either 
confirm nor deny anything because I don't want, you know, sometimes people are like, I saw a tweet after I watched the movie and I was like, it was so clear what the spoiler was, but it like redacted certain words. So it's to like technically it. they weren't spoiling anything. But, no, but it was like, but they oh were. my God, maybe I'll read the tweet later. But anyway, <laughs> it was so spoilery. So I'm like, if you deny something too much and you're spoiling that it, that it was there that yeah. it exists you know so i'm not i'm gonna try to tiptoe around something without really kind of again confirming nor denying but like there was a possibility that toby Maguire and andrew garfield were going to be in this movie and we speculated about it a lot in that speculation episode of that trailer reaction yeah. uh, episode so i wasn't excited for that that's not something i wanted like i thought that would be too fan servicey right uh, and it would take away from this film series and tom holland right. and these characters and by adding Alfred Molina and Jamie Foxx and Willem Dafoe, I'm like, you know, okay. This is just too much. And obviously, I'm expecting maybe more Spider-Man. I'm like, this is going to kind of take away. This is going to be a huge mess. My expectations were really low. And somehow, I was just constantly amazed at how well it executed all of these things. Kind of in the same way where like Infinity War and Endgame, you're like, more Infinity War, more where you're like, there's too many characters. How are they possibly going to pull this off? Right. And then obviously they made a great movie and each character gets their time and you're like, they nailed it. Yeah. You know what I mean? There's no other way you could put 30 fucking characters in a movie and have it work this well. (laughs) And for this, I'm like, this is still a Tom Holland and Tom Holland's like little cast of characters. This is their movie. This is his Spider-Man movie. It's very much their movie. thousand percent. Any other element to this, the villains from other universes, Doctor Strange, they really play supporting roles in very creative ways and yet they still get their own involvement i was honestly amazed at how well they pulled this off also this movie is like a giant event movie which for me it's like spider-man is like kind of like he can be this big kind of hero but he's mostly kind of the small scale hero with small scale problems right it's very relatable problems that we talked about this that's what the character of spider-man is all about exactly girls Yeah. yeah high school things college things You know, can he balance a work and his superhero life and study is all together and Aunt May and blah, 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 right? Right. At the core of this movie, and I'm going to talk about it in spoilers, there is a very small scale high school problem that kicks off the plot. Yes. And it's not in the trailers, so I'm not going to talk about it. But I didn't see that coming. It's like like a little thing that blows up. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. And I'm like, and it made me happy because I'm like, this is what Spider-Man is. You know, he has very small problems that we can all relate to. He's an everyman. You know what I mean? And And he's a kid, so he doesn't quite know how to solve those problems. Yeah. He doesn't really think things through all the way. Like, he still is uh, naive in a lot of ways. And yet... God, like, this is obviously such a big film. There's multiple villains. There's multiverse things. Doctor Strange is freaking out. Like, and yet they handle it so, so well. And at its core, it's still a high school aged Tom Holland, Peter Parker film. Yes. And I think one of my other concerns, too, is like all of the bad Spider-Man movies. What's the thing we don't like about them? Too many villains. Not enough time with (laughs) Spider-Man. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I'm like, they're going to do it again. It's going to be a Batman Returns. It's going to be an Amazing Spider-Man 2, where it's going to be so villain focused that we're going to actually shortchange the hero. And that didn't happen. I think a part of why that didn't happen is all of these villains already have an established history, which helped out that a lot. They didn't it, have that, to like yeah, that, dig deep into it. But we spent time with them, though. We, we did. and We spent more time with them than I thought. We actually got a little <laughs> bit more development from them than I thought we would, too. I thought this movie gives more depth and more character development to these uh, villains than their own respective movies did. Yeah. You know what I mean? Especially since like we get to see them interact with each other too. That too. But like Electro is like, we just did this movie comically (laughs) underdeveloped. Like he's as one dimensional as it gets. (laughs) You know what I mean? And now in this movie, he has, he has some play. He has, yeah. There, we get a lot of time with him. And I'm like, this movie does him better than his movie ever did. And even the characters that had good development in the movies, you have Willem Dafoe and Alfred Molina, Mm. uh, their characters, uh, Green Goblin and Doc Ock, we get a little bit more in these films that we didn't know we wanted more in. 
Like and it, it was cool to see like Octavius and Osborne interacted because they knew who each other yeah, were. Yeah, they're both very famous scientists. Yeah, from their universe. Yeah, yeah. They, they're going to know each other, right? Again, like Green Goblin, like he had a t- he has a whole film. He has plenty of screen time. Mm-hmm. He comes back in like Visions in the other two films. Two and three, I believe, yeah. right? Yeah. So, like, we got plenty of him, and yet there is something more satisfying about getting a little bit more depth in his character after the fact. You know, and same with Alfred Molina, where, like, you know, he just realized at the end of his movie, that, like, oh, maybe what I'm doing is wrong. What, what happens after that? We don't know. He dies <laughs> and, uh, at, at, the, at the end of Spider-Man 2, like, immediately after... Uh, yeah, you know, he just kind of takes a machine and goes down to the bottom of and the river. And he does it to himself. He redeems himself in that sure. way. But but it's kind of like, wouldn't an epilogue work for some of these characters? This is kind of what that movie does. It kind of gives you an epilogue for these villains. Mm-hmm. And it was so satisfying. Again, in ways I didn't know I needed. <laughs> until you saw it. It's, right. Until I saw it. So again, my expectations were low. Okay. Oh my God. Like, so above and beyond. Let's look at the chat real quick. Something I've noticed about the MCU is that they know how to give everyone the right amount of screen time. That's yes. true. Yes. They do a lot in a little a lot of times. You know, one scene in an MCU movie with the right kind of character development can do more than like a whole series can. Yeah. What else? How many times did you cry in this movie, by the way? Twice. I cried twice, too. I don't cry in films very much. I'm not an emotional person. Uh, but this one got me in two places. That's all I'll say. That's all I'll let you say too. <laughs> yeah, we'll get to that later. It's but for different reasons. But it, it's just it's 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 emotional in places. Yeah. Like this yeah. is a, this is a good movie. I also love this movie is very character driven. It's not very plot driven. The plot is actually quite simple. I think when you really kind of sit down and break it down. Mm-hmm. It sounds kind of convoluted because it has to do with like magic and Doctor Strange or whatever. But a lot but of we that's already like, understand all that exactly. And that was in the trailer, too. So it's like after it kind of gets started, it's a lot of character development. It's a lot of character motivated plot. And that's something we talked about this in like X-Men where like the first two X-Men movies are so well written that they just create a problem. They have their set of characters and they allow what they think those characters would do to dictate where the film moves. Yeah. You know, and I think. That is like an ultimate test of good writing where none of it feels like it doesn't make sense. There's not a right. point in those movies or this movie where you're like, that doesn't really make sense. Why is you don't really question it? You know what I mean? There was one thing I questioned, but we'll get to it. I, yeah. You said you had a plot hole. Well, I, I had a plot hole and there was also something I, I questioned where I'm like, why didn't they just do this? But OK, we'll get to that. OK, OK. I didn't really have any of those moments, but also I just watched it today and I haven't seen it twice like you have. Mm-hmm. But um. Also, like, the villains were very well handled. I know I sort of mentioned that, but, like, I was really afraid it would be a straight up, we're a team now, let's go kill Spider-Man. Which is what every other multi-villain Spider-Man movie has been. It seems like everybody kind of has their own motivation for doing what they're doing. But it's a very cheap way of writing something where they're like, hey, you don't like Spider-Man. I don't like Spider-Man. We're teaming up now. Let's go get Spider-Man. And then the third person's like, hey, I don't like Spider-Man either. I'm like, cool. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> Come on board. Get in the back. We're going after Spider-Man right get now. Get in, loser. We're going after <laughs> Spider-Man. <laughs> you, you, know, you know what I'm talking about? Yeah, I, yeah. I remember this being kind of like a concern of mine going into like the first Avengers movie where I was like, are they all just going to kind of meet up and be like, hey, we're all superpower. Let's make a team. <laughs> no, it was much more nuanced than that. It was problematic there was a lot time. of like plot things moving around before they finally were like fuck i guess we're a team you know what i mean They're like oh i guess i guess we are a team yeah like, they didn't want to be exactly yeah and i think this the way they handled the villains i think was spectacular like yeah. they formed a little team for a certain reason that i thought was very believable it was all very character motivated mm-hmm. i don't think they all yeah that's all i'll say <laughs> Cool. Do you have anything else before we move on to spoilers? I think it's so hard to talk about it without... I'm ready to go to spoilers so I can speak freely. Yeah. Also, <laughs> I think the trailer revealed very little. It was a good trailer. Yeah. I was I was surprised. Because a lot of times you see a trailer and you're like, cool, that, no, the whole, that's the whole movie. It seemed like the trailer revealed a lot, but it revealed like it, almost nothing. Yeah. I, I was surprised left and right throughout the whole film. And again, yep. that's also, I think, like a result of two things. One, a good trailer. And two, a well-written movie. Yeah. Cool. Let's go into spoilers. Thank <laughs> God. So from this moment on, right now, spoiler talk. We're going to spoil the movie. We're going to spoil Spider-Man No Way Home. Please stop listening 
now. <laughs> there are so much things to spoil in this movie. There's a lot How to do spoil. We, I just figure we kind of go in order because, like, I don't know what where to, where to begin, right? So we're just going to hit, like, bullet points of, like, things now? In, like, the most order. <laughs> Holy shit, yeah, yeah, so yeah, much yeah. happened. <laughs> in, like, the most, like, chronological way I can think of. I think the first reveal, which may not seem like a big reveal to a lot of people, but it was for me. It was uh, a big deal for me. Uh, do you know what I'm about to talk about? Are no, you, you going to talk the first reveal? Think, okay, for me, the first reveal is that Mary Jane's last name is Watson. And I know, small potatoes. Small potatoes. It's interesting. It's interesting. The, the Watson. <laughs> <laughs> because, she, yeah, uh, they're like, oh, Michelle Jones Watson. And she's like, I don't go by Watson. And I'm like, oh, it's, that's intriguing. Um, Why yeah. don't you like being called Watson? What's the history? Is it a problematic father who you hate? What's, who yells at you that you're garbage every yeah. time you leave the house? Like, what is it? I was, and and for a long time we thought MJ, you know, Zendaya's character is Michelle Jones, a completely original character who just happens to go by MJ, and it kind of fills that void. And yeah. it's kind of basically saying, we're not doing MJ. This is our MJ, right? But it's not quite that. She's also she's still Mary Jane Watson. She's it's just not Mary Jane. Both. It's kind of both. Yeah. Because she's still MJ Watson. You garbage. You're never going to be nothing just, just like, like her. her. Yep. <laughs> I have to go to school. <laughs> <laughs> that girl's like 16. Leave her alone. <laughs> All right. Small potatoes. Let's move on. Daredevil. <laughs> the second I saw the cane. Same. I was like, yes. <laughs> I grabbed Sable so hard. Here's the thing. There are a lot of spoilers in this movie that were speculated so fucking hard because it seemed like the obvious thing to do. Yep. So Daredevil, after Netflix canceled it because Marvel wanted to do their own TV shows, basically forcing Netflix to cancel. I think Netflix I think, at the end chose happened? to cancel it. Yeah, maybe that's how it happened. I yeah. think there was like, well, I mean, we don't want to like basically advertise for Marvel. Right. It was something uh, along those lines. Marvel couldn't touch those characters for two years. Right. So when those two years elapsed, basically people started tweeting a lot like, hey, Today's a day. Make a Daredevil announcement. You can use him now. Put him in things. And like Kevin Feige basically like kind of, you know, pretended like he wasn't hearing all this because he had a plan in mind. Yeah. And then there was um, that interview like two weeks ago. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. Where they asked him if uh, Charlie Cox would be returning as Daredevil. It was while they were doing a tour for Mm Spider-Man. And Amy Pascal was there, too. And... He said, like, yes, if Daredevil was to come back in any future project, and then Amy Pascal immediately started laughing and giggling and stuff. Oh, my God. So I'm like, oh, nope. she just, it, no he's, he's po- going to be in the fucking movie. No poker face at <laughs> yeah. all. People really thought that it would be that hand in that shot uh, from the trailer. Oh, no, that uh, just ended up being a damage control agent. Yeah. There's just... apparently a character from the comics, but I don't really know him. So. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, okay, cool. His uh, his interrogations were pretty funny, though. Yeah. I thought they played with like the characters very well. <laughs> he, he, you know, he played an asshole real well, you too. Know, MJ <laughs> being like smart yeah. and aloof. Ned being tricked. <laughs> yeah, and just kind of like, what's it called, word vomit. Yep. And then, um, which he almost did. Like he in that homecoming, he wanted to like tell everybody he's Spider Man. Yeah. He can't keep his mouth shut. <laughs> uh, and then like Aunt May just like being like basically fuck you. <laughs> yeah. But anyway, yeah. So Matt Murdock, uh, yeah. Charlie Cox in the movie. Oh, when he caught the brick, that was great. <laughs> and it's almost kind of like, would he have done? That? It's just kind of like we have to show this is a daredevil really fast. Like he has a, yeah. you know, he has a one minute cameo, but. That's kind of like a, we're going to table this discussion for later because we're actually going to be friends. (laughs) Like, clearly that man's super power. So, for people that don't know who he is, I guarantee you're like, what the hell's up with this guy? I love that he intercepted the brick because Peter was about to catch it. Yep. And Daredevil caught it first. Uh, Fun fact, over the weekend, Daredevil was trending on Netflix. It was in the top 10 shows. For multiple reasons, (laughs) though. Because Kingpin is in Hawkeye. I love Daredevil so much. I love that show. I Uh, really like that show a lot, too. I'm now binging season three, which I didn't finish. It's one of the better shows that Marvel TV, when it was a thing, worked on. No, best one. Best one. I like Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. a lot, though. Oh, shut the fuck (laughs) up. God damn it. No, Daredevil's the best show. Punisher's amazing. Punisher's good, but uh, Daredevil's the best one. Yeah, I'm just so happy he's back. And I love that. Because in the comics, they're both kind of street-level 
New York. Yeah, they team up a few they times. They team up a lot, yeah. They both have a common enemy with the Kingpin. Kingpin, yeah. And I guess Hawkeye does now, too. <laughs> yeah. Cool. Uh, can't oh, wait yeah, for... spoiler for Hawkeye. Oh, God, <laughs> spoiling everything. At this point, if you're not caught up on your MCU, like... Get out. Get out. <laughs> Why are you listening to this? Uh, there's also um, other connections. Uh, obviously, the uh, Rogers the Musical we yep. saw. And this movie takes place, I guess, like a month before Hawkeye. It takes place in November. Yeah. And then it obviously ends in December uh, during Christmas time. And also, uh, Yelena in Hawkeye makes reference to the new Statue of the Liberty. The new Statue of Liberty and the oh, actually, Christmas tree. Hey, in the wait, a second, wait a second. Wait a second. The Statue of Liberty never gets finished. At least, she, unless if they refinish it. She doesn't it, know that yet. Maybe, or maybe, it's Baal. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> no, because it's it's clearly being like advertised that there's going to be a new Statue of Liberty. Because there's, yeah. r- there's phone calls. But that's in December. That's in Christmas time. Yeah. When in November. You think they got he'd, a he'd shield destroy- back up in a month? <laughs> that's what I'm saying. Like, he destroyed it. So it's just regular Statue of Liberty again. Mm-hmm. They could have fixed that in a month. Well, maybe who knows anyway maybe to use some of that seized stark technology for that that whole part where everybody knows uh peter parker spider-man stuff when they're in the apartment that whole scene that's done in like one take i loved it it was so incredible good. so so good and it's one of those where it's like probably not done in one take but it's made to look like that and he really gives you a sense of like realness and pressure and like yep. kind of like the walls are closing in on you you get a sense it was of very space chaotic yeah and that, <laughs> right. So good. Like Peter's trying to close all the windows. Aunt May's trying to talk to him about sex. Yeah. Well, he's like, this has nothing to do with that. He's trying to like divert the conversation to like their breakup. <laughs> Happy's crying. Um, he had on that. There's so many little Easter eggs too. He put on like the t-shirt that Tony Stark bought him. Yep. Which isn't baggy anymore. It's like he grew into it. Oh man, he got a, he's a little muscular. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. What's the next cool thing that happens? The Doctor Strange fight. That was great. When he gets astral projected and his body is still defending itself. Because the spider sense is yep. subconscious. If I you love look at that. Peter's head while he's uh, astral, you see like the lines coming out of his head too, like the in the comic when he has a spider sense. No way. Yeah. What? You see like little squiggly lines. Oh. <laughs> I'm about to see that. That's so badass. I love that fight. I love the spider sense. I loved going to the mirror dimension. That makes perfect sense for what they were doing. And we saw yep. that in the trailer, but I kind of didn't put two and two together that they'd be going in the mirror dimension. What did you think was happening <laughs> with, like, know. flying trains and stuff? Yeah, I guess you're right. <laughs> um, Why didn't Strange and Parker discuss the parameters of the spell beforehand? Yeah. It's he, almost, he, he did kind of rush into it. Yeah. That, but then it'd be kind of one of those situations where it's like, Cut to credits, written directed by George Lucas. Yeah. You know what it, I mean? It's because the movie had to happen. <laughs> yeah, but... exactly. Oh. I, I saw a meme that was like, <laughs> "Why not just make people forget Mysterio?" Problem solved. He's dead anyway. <laughs> roll credits. <laughs> yeah, roll credits. <laughs> but yeah, Peter one hundred percent caused all this to happen when he was the last thing he yelled before the spell went crazy was basically everybody who knew I was Spider Man before should still know. And I guess the spell took that very literally. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Because it took because it to all everybody, other... Everybody, yeah. Yep. yeah. We were speculating, like, what would be the reason that these specific people made it when they're not all dead? You know, and it's because yeah. them dying had nothing to do with it. It just so happens that several of them learn who Peter Parker are the moments before they die. Which brings me to my one plot hole in the movie. Okay, go. Electro never learns that Peter Parker is Spider-Man. And he's the only are one you... that doesn't know. Really? Yeah. Because Green Goblin doesn't even know until after Electro dies. That's my one plot hole in the movie. And it's something that could be very easily retconned. I'm sure it could be like, oh, you know, he heard his name or something like that. But I don't think at any point in The Amazing Spider-Man 2, it's, his identity is revealed to Electro. And this movie even alludes to that when Electro's like, I thought you'd be black. Like, he didn't know what he looked like. Which, you can know somebody's name he, without knowing what they look like. He could but. have also thought that prior, maybe... You know, yeah. like if he, you know, but it's the first time they're talking or whatever. Yeah, but yeah, that's that's my God, one. You might, that's my one you plot might, hole in the movie. You might be right. I can't really think of why that would happen. I mean, also like everything else. Works we're gonna talk about it, but Eddie perfectly. Brock comes over. He doesn't know that actually might be explained in the Venom post credit scene because he has Venom's hive mind my, knowledge. Yeah, that's what I thought across too. Across universes. Yeah, that's kind of what I thought too, but. Which, oh, I'm kind of sad we didn't see Topher Grace. <laughs> they could have redeemed him. 
Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know what, though? Just post credit scene. Topher's just walking down an alley being like, what the fuck is going on here? And then have him just, like, blip away again, you know? I mean, that's basically what Eddie Brock did. He just... <laughs> that's what I'm saying. He got drunk in a bar, learned the history of the MCU, and then got sent back. What if, like, at the other side of the bar was just, like, Topher Grace? It was like, I'll have another one. I wouldn't be mad at that. <laughs> just, like, real quick. <laughs> It's like, like, why not? He doesn't have to actually do anything in the movie, which I'm so glad Tom Hardy had nothing to do in this movie. Yeah, we're going to get to him. Um, because, again, we're trying to go chronologically. That's at the end of the yeah, movie. we jumped around a little uh, bit. Aunt, Aunt May. Aunt May dies. That was my first time crying in this movie. Yep, me too. I didn't see that coming at all. I didn't want... Here's the thing. When a movie foreshadows that a character is going to die, I, I can usually spot it pretty well the problem is is like as it's happening i'm like please subvert my expectations because i don't want to see them die like i right. at the end of the day at the end of the movie i'm gonna be like that was the right call emotionally and narratively however in the moment i'm like please don't make me feel anything no and the reason i think the reason why it got me emotionally is one i love mr tomei as aunt may uh-huh she was very likable yeah two the way Peter reacts to it reminds me a lot of uh, Mufasa's death in Lion King when Simba is like, Dad, wake up. And he's like trying to wake him up. He's like in it's, denial about it's it. It's denial, yeah. It, it yep. hit me. Because it's it makes you really feel like you're there. Like something horrible happened and that's it. There's no going yep. back. Like this is, you can't change it. And then Happy pulls up and he doesn't even get a chance to grieve before they start like pointing guns at yeah. him. God. And he's telling Peter to run. Like, like that Peter whole moment like, was like so intense. Leave her corpse. Like, yeah. yeah. And she also says the line. Yeah, she says a line about, uh, yeah. With great power, there must also come great responsibility, which uh-huh. is a Say rewording it. from the Sam Raimi movie, but, but it's but, the but. original wording yep. from the comics. It's That's how it originally that's appeared. Stan Lee's original line for it. On the first issue on Amazing Fantasy 15. Yes. Yeah. Which I thought was fucking awesome. Yep. And uh, made it a little bit more emotional. <laughs> <laughs> what a nerd. <laughs> God, you're squeaking that shit so much. No, I'm Stay moving around still. too much. I'm excited. <laughs> it made me question a couple things. It almost felt mo- more emotional than losing an Uncle Ben, which we didn't see, obviously. Right. But it's alluded to, but it's yeah. a, right, right, right. But, you know, Uncle Ben being kind of like the moral compass for Peter Parker, right? right? But as these movies have established, Aunt May is, that's his real parent. Yeah. You know? It's, Essentially his mother. Yeah. yeah. Like, w- the way we see her parenting in the last two movies, especially Homecoming, because we don't see her a whole lot in Far From Home. No. You know, having just rewatched Homecoming, like, she's like the best mom because she's kind of not a mom. You know, she she kind of like toes the line between aunt and mom in such a way that I feel makes for a better parent at the end of the day. It seems a little realistic. Yeah. So Uncle Ben is gone. You know, Aunt May is all he has left, and which is why Aunt May doesn't really die very often because that'd be too sad. She usually doesn't. Right. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> yeah. She survives all the time. Miraculously can, old. I can think of only, I guess, counting this movie, only three instances where she dies. Oh, yeah. like in And in and one of those, she gets brought back. Right. <laughs> so this is it. He has no more parent. Like, this almost means more, this death, than Uncle Ben's probably did, even though we didn't see it. Right. And then when, when she delivers a line, later on, it's kind of confirmed that that's his first time hearing it. So whether or not Unc- this Uncle Ben, the MCU Uncle Ben, whom we never met, whether or not he ever said it doesn't matter because Peter Parker never heard it right. until Aunt May said it. Right. And I thought she was going to be like, like Uncle Ben would say. But she didn't say that. Those are her words. On her dying moment, this is one of those universe things where it's just slightly different in a way that I'm like, holy shit. So it almost makes these three movies feel like this is Peter's origin in three movies instead yeah. of in one It's like he had an origin thing. trilogy. Yeah. Because... Especially with where he ends up at the end of this. Right. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because, like, again, we don't know what his Uncle Ben was like and we don't know what impact that death had on him. And I'm sure it had some. But it wasn't the hero defining moment that it is for every other Spider-Man we've ever seen. Right. Yeah. So I really loved how they gave that to aunt may because it's just kind of like, you know, uncle Ben for like a minute in every other iteration. Yeah. It doesn't have the same emotional weight as this character whom we've known for a while. 
again, single parent, not even her kid. You f- you really feel for her. Like she's she's rough in it, yep. but she's a great parent for Peter, and they have such a beautiful relationship in these films. And she's a good person. Yeah, <laughs> obviously, they, all that feast stuff is still yeah. there. So God, like that really hit. Yep. And I cried there, and both performances, Tom Holland's and hers, yep. just really, really believable, really well done. Yeah, Aunt May's death was the result of like this whole sequence, but this whole sequence um, kind of starts when uh, Peter's spider sense like starts going off, and he doesn't know what the hell is causing it. Yeah, he, he's like walking around the, the the apartment. He's like, yeah, like what that? It was almost creepy. But then he figures out he that figures out that uh, Norman, Norman had yeah. become the goblin again. Uh huh. That was good. And my God, the goblin is brutal in this movie. <laughs> Norman's yeah. on sabbatical, sweetie. <laughs> or is it honey, honey? <laughs> God, I'm really happy that this movie realizes that the best villain of all of these is Willem Dafoe's Green Goblin and made yeah. him the primary antagonist. And they took away his dumb mask. Yes, they do that pretty quickly. <laughs> uh, also, yeah, his costume. We're going to get to costume talk soon. Yeah. But his costume felt like we, we talked about this in the when we were talking about um uh, in the trailer reaction. We speculated, and we kind of knew that that was it was him all along. Yeah. But um, his costume is like a course correction from the complaints of the the first movie. He his, doesn't his look like a Power movie. Ranger anymore. He, right, he looks like a Power Ranger. He's wearing a helmet when really it looks nothing like the Green Goblin. In this one, they give him an orange sweater that's sorry, orange, not orange, purple. Purple that starts like deteriorating during battle, so that the end result looks like the Green Goblin. That yeah. is so smart. Like all the fan service in this movie, it feels organic. It feels like it's not a reaction to what fans want. It feels like they just wrote the thing. Yeah. You know? And And it's it's, believable that these characters um, are doing this thing. Yes. Absolutely. On what I was saying about, like, the villains and how they treat them, like, I would have never thought this movie would have gone in the directions that it did. Especially with the villains. Like, he's, like, buddy-buddy with the villains for, like, a good chunk of the film. Yeah. And they're all having, like, good talks. Yeah. And we get, again, we get more character development in these villains than we did in their movies. Mm -hmm. For, like, Doc Ock and Goblin, like, they're having moments of, like, sobriety. Yep. Where they can look on their actions and realize their wrongdoings. And they had that for, like, a split second in their films, but we didn't really get to sit with it. Yeah. So, it is kind of like a nice epilogue. We get to sit with it a bit more here, especially with uh, Doc Ock. Yeah. Yeah. He was awesome. cured in this movie. Throughout most of the movie. Exactly. Yeah. And at the end, you know, he switches sides. He, you know, he gets carried. He becomes, he helps fight with the good guys. He's not in that fight as one of the villains. But when he shows up, it's made to make you question it. Because he's like, I'm going to handle him. I, I knew he wasn't going to attack well, them. For a split second, I thought he's switching bad for whatever reason. Nah. But then, yeah. Because literally has... the last time we saw him, he got attacked by Electro and he ran away. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, yeah, all the villains have, like, their own little moments of, like, being good people here. Yeah. And, again, we get to sit with uh, Norman Osborn, completely sober. Yep. From the he, Goblin. He which seems a little didn't... He seems a little lost for yeah. a bit. We didn't get that in that first movie. And that was fucking 20-some years ago. Yeah. 19 years ago? 2002. Almost 20 years ago. Almost so, 20. So, in that movie, like, at the very end, you know, he talks to Peter and he's like, I didn't mean to do those things, blah, blah, blah. And then he immediately switches back. But I've always kind of read that scene as being like, no, that's Goblin pretending. I think it was. Because, because while he's talking, he's, he's controlling the Goblin. The glider. You're right. Yeah. You're right the glider. You're he's right. trying to trick him. Yeah. So that's not even him. That's no. not even Norman Osborn. But actually. we do get some of like the real Norman Osborn yes. here. And he's, whatever the Goblin did to him mentally, like it changed him a bit. He's kind of broken. <laughs> so fucking good. And yeah. I just think, again, in my opinion, the best Spider-Man villain we've ever seen on screen is Willem Dafoe. Uh, incredible actor. And so it's great that they picked him to be the main villain here, and it works so fucking well. Yep. And his first fight with Peter, like, the action feels very brutal and very, like, real. They're, like, slamming each other through walls. Uh, in, the, in the apartment. Yeah. In the condo, Peter's yes. Peter's punching him, and he's laughing. That might be my favorite action scene in any Spider-Man movie. It doesn't have the swinging, but it is such a visceral fight. Yep. Um, and also, and all the fighting in this movie feels very visceral. It feels nothing real. feels floaty. Nothing yeah. feels. So there's weight. Yeah. Like we were talking about Amazing Spider-Man too. So a lot of that felt weightless. Like it was just like computer generated, not real. All of this 
hits. Mm-hmm. Um, there's a scene where uh, Spider-Man goes Black Widow on him. Did you see that? Yeah, he does a little he like the hit, leg thing. The leg thing just starts punching from up top. Yep. That was fantastic. That is straight up a Natasha move. Um, there's also a PS4 move. Tom Holland said he did one. Was it the... Um... He jumps up webs to the floor and, and then, then kicks him yeah and then pulls himself down which yeah. is a, which is a ps4 move love that this movie makes a point of like why try to reboot something that's already been done so well it, it's it'd be very difficult it's a mistake that like the amazing spider-man films did because it's yeah. like you're just living in the shadow of willem dafoe i guess why not just bring back willem dafoe that's our goblin and uh, if we're going to have another goblin character in the MCU, it makes more sense now that it's a hobgoblin. I'd who, be fine with that. Who could potentially be Ned, I guess. It doesn't have to be. I'm just saying, like, a hob, a hobgoblin has been, like, four or five different people. Yeah. But it's a person who admired Green Goblin and is doing that. He's yeah, like, I'm going to do that. Hobgoblin was a Green Goblin fanboy. Because they were Mysterio fanboys. Yeah. Like, he had a lot of fans. A lot of people are like, Mysterio was right. And he was around right. for, like, two minutes. Yeah. <laughs> So now it would make perfect sense for Willem Dafoe to have inspired another goblin character. And then you you get to have your cake and eat it too. You get to have a new goblin who is still an original take while still being really good. And that is possible because there's a scene where uh, MJ's like looking at TikTok real quick. Uh And you see somebody like it looks like somebody like recreating Green Goblin's glider on a TikTok. Do it. Like (laughs) do it. Make Hobgoblin. Yeah. Make it Flash Thompson. Hmm. (laughs) <laughs> I like that they like make fun of things that we didn't like in those movies, but in a very respectable way. Like they 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 do that a lot with the Andrew Garfield stuff. They do it with both. Yeah, I mean, making fun of Doc Ock, obviously, but like Spider Man right. always makes fun of Doc Ock. Yeah, he's stupid. It's, it's a thing. Yeah, <laughs> he's got a bowl cut, <laughs> yeah. and his you name know? is Doctor Otto Octavius, and he becomes Doctor Octopus. Exactly. Well, even Spider Man Two makes fun of that fact. Though. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, they they did put the memes in this movie. I miss one meme. Three Spider Man pointing at each other. Did they oh, point? Oh yeah, it I, happens in the. I read it, but it I didn't kind notice. This happens twice, but when they're in the lab together, they do point at each other. Okay. And then when oh, they're standing wait. in a circle at the top of the statue talking, there's points where they're pointing at I, each other I didn't as well. notice that. The other memes were, you know, I'm something of a scientist myself, yep. which was fine because he's probably said it a million times. It's probably it's, his catchphrase. It's like a dad joke. You yeah. know what I mean? You know, I'm something of a scientist myself. <laughs> my dad used to make, oh, my dad's a doctor. And he used to make all kind of, kinds of fucking jokes about how he's a the doctor. Doctors in. They've got their dad jokes. And then, I uh, totally buy that. There's the my back. Yeah, that's not really a meme, though. <laughs> the way he said it was almost exactly like when he... Fell, yeah. yeah like, Which, again, we, it's, we it's mentioned... just my back. Yeah. We mentioned that's a reference to his real-life back got, injury. He got hurt filming Seabiscuit. Yeah. <laughs> what an idiot, first of all. But, I mean, yeah, horseback riding, that is dangerous. That is dangerous. Uh-huh. But, like, uh, apparently that scene in Spider-Man 2 was... A joke about it in the first place. Yeah, because he was recasted by Jake Gyllenhaal, and then they cut him at the end. <laughs> Jake Gyllenhaal was briefly cast as Spider-Man, which is one of That's like... A, well, they do... When they were younger, they looked very similar. Yeah, well, that was one of those serendipitous moments when they casted him as Mysterio, you know? Yeah. Like, you get to be in Spider-Man, finally. But yeah, should we uh, move on to the huge reveals that we've already kind of talked about? Uh, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> yes, moving on. Biggest reveal, obviously. Ned is magic. Yes! You read my mind! He puts on that sling ring like a fucking champ. <laughs> I just wish we could see Peter. <laughs> uh, no, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's Andrew Garfield and Tobey Maguire are in this movie, which is kind of like, no, duh. Did you immediately know it was Andrew yes, in the alleyway? The, I did, it too. It was the eyes. It was the eyes and the his eyes. body language, too. Yeah. There's a point where he's like, he's kind of like going like that, and I'm like, that's... That's Andrew Garfield in a suit. We talked about his suit so much. I've looked at it so much. You so I would immediately re- picked I up. I would recognize it from a fucking mile away. I said... You did recognize it from a mile Yeah, pretty much. I was like, those are the Mark Bagley eyes. The big, round, teardrop eyes. That are almost that too comic accurate. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's it. Yep. And so, I, yeah, from a mile away, I was like, that's him. Honestly, that suit, which I said I didn't like... In that movie. It looked looked, good in this movie. It looked good in this movie. It's obviously a different suit made to look exactly the same. It's physically a different suit. Right. Well, yeah, it's not the same prop. Whatever this... Right. The materials, whatever they did, worked in this movie. Something looks better. I liked it very much. I liked it. Yeah. 
And uh, he gets the colors. It's a he color still got thing. his awesome spider. I think he has the best spider symbol. You like with the, the, long, the legs. long legs? I like it. It's almost like paint drip. Yeah, it's almost. It's almost I like, like it. it's edgy. It, it is edgy. It, it works in his universe. Seeing it's his... similar to the PS4 too. Yeah, I'm so glad he was the first one revealed because I think it. He would obviously save Toby for last. Here's the thing, He's though. He's the original. I, I honestly think Andrew Garfield stole the show in every I, scene he was in. I agree with you. I think Andrew was very good. Toby's face is weird now. I think he... I mean, he's... Did he have, like, Botox or something? I think he just didn't age as gracefully as he would have wanted to. I guess. I'm really glad they didn't get de We talked about this. Yeah. Because it... Like, we have just the current iterations of them. Yeah. I, I wouldn't want three young Peter Parkers... No, I wanted an old Peter Parker that's going to impart wisdom on young Peter Parker, which is exactly what happened, which can I get to my next thing I want to talk about? Sure. I fucking called the thing I said. <laughs> I predicted that scene almost verbatim, by the way. The great power? Yes. <laughs> Did you notice? I noticed. Good. Blake looked over at me in the theater and said, Arnaldo said this. I said that <laughs> word for fucking word, and it happened just as I said it. I just want to point out, I, and I'm so glad we've got tape, we've got evidence, there's a TikTok I made for it. It's out there in the world, you guys. Hey, I called that the black and gold suit was his suit turned inside out. Yes, but you had plenty of good evidence for that. Damn it. <laughs> <laughs> this was just my hunch because I'm a smart guy. I should be writing fucking movies is all I'm saying. We're going to go back to the tape, by the way. I'm going to insert the tape right here from Amazing Spider-Man 1. The first Amazing Spider-Man yeah. episode, I said this would happen. Roll the tape. Yeah, exactly. And like I said, I just think they need to do bring this back. And I think the perfect way to do it would be if in No Way Home, hear me out, assuming Toby and Andrew Garfield are going to be in this. All right. They have a scene together. It's a nice touching scene. And Toby, Peter Parker, says to him, you know, my uncle used to say, with great power. And then Tom Holland goes, comes great responsibility. Yeah, my Uncle Ben used to say that too. And Andrew Garfield's like, what the fuck? Yes. <laughs> He's like, mine, mine just says something about moral obligation. <laughs> Wait, what, what is it? My uncle said that my father believed that if you could do good things for other people, you had a moral obligation to do those things. And then that's what's at stake here. Not choice, responsibility. <laughs> God, that'd be a really long scene. <laughs> I think it'd be a funny gag, though, too. It'd be a great gag. And part of the reason I say this is just as proof in case it does happen. You heard it here first. <laughs> And that was the tape. They might have skimmed over like the Andrew Garfield thing. Maybe they soft rebooted it because he just he would look at him and he just like nods. Yeah, because he wouldn't. They wouldn't turn that into a joke. And I think we no, said it was this. a pretty serious moment. It's a serious moment. And I think I said that. I, I I think I said something along the lines of like, it doesn't need to be a joke because you'd probably undercut the meaning there. But he understands because his his uncle Ben said something similar. It, it was basically the same thing. And though. his dad said the real thing. Remember in a deleted scene. In a deleted that scene that we will which consider canon. I consider it canon because it's so that canon. scene was too good to not be canon. And they never made that next movie, so we're just gonna say it's canon. We might get that movie now. <laughs> Maybe slightly different. Probably it's under consideration, and that's enough for me. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Now there is more consideration to kind of make more things. Yeah. with. Toby Maguire and Andrew Garfield. Probably not Toby Maguire. I mean, I don't, I don't know. know if Toby wants to do it. Again, last thing he did was like boss baby narrator. Why? <laughs> but... I'm not sure if he's interested or not. After Andrew Garfield, I'm just going to call him Andrew Garfield or Peter number three. <laughs> oh, I also predicted that they would uh, number each other. But in my in my head, I thought they were going to go oldest to youngest. I thought they would too. And I think they did originally, but they were like confused. <laughs> <laughs> because they're just like, okay, so like Tom Holland's number one. Everybody Toby's just assumed the other Peter was Peter number two. Yeah. And, Tom, and Andrew's like, well, fuck, I guess I'm number three. <laughs> the way he delivered that, too, he's like, Peter number three. <laughs> <laughs> Every, and then, here's something I do want to talk about. Every moment between the three of them is wonderful. It honestly felt like three brothers bonding. They had such good chemistry, which makes sense because they are literally the same person. Yes. Which we saw in, like, Loki. Like, two Lokis immediately hit it off in some in some instances too well where they're all trying to like uh stab each other in the back two other lokis fell in love with each other exactly so <laughs> it would make perfect sense that these guys would have chemistry but like my concern going into this you know obviously assuming that like this was going to happen or whatever i was nervous that they would either take over the film 
spend too much time with Toby, too much time with Andrew, and not enough time with, like, Tom Holland, you know, wh- whose movie this is. Right. And then I was nervous that they would barely be in the movie, and we would want that more That would just be, like, them. a cameo. And they goldilocks it. It's just the, right. They're in the entire, like, last 45 minutes of this movie. But it's just right. It's not yeah. too much. It's not too little. No. And I mentioned this in one of, in one of our... I don't remember which one. But I'm. Uh, we've done a lot of Spider-Man stuff. But I mentioned <laughs> that, like, they each need their closure moments. And I think they each got and one. And we got that on that rooftop just like I said we would. Thank God. Yes. Philly wants to know our ranking system for the Spider-Man. His is Holland, Garfield, and Maguire. Agree. Mine is... <laughs> Garfield, Holland, Maguire. Uh, I Andrew Garfield has always been my favorite Spider-Man, and he still is. This movie just solidified it. <laughs> no, I think Tom Holland's the best. <laughs> uh, I think he's not only a good actor, but I think I think he seems to really personify Peter Parker and Spider-Man. Andrew Garfield is very good. Those movies hit him. Hit, you just hit think Peter Parker's too cool. Hit and miss those <laughs> movies. I feel, but I feel like he's just kind of like an else world. Like he's not the main Peter Parker to me when I put them next to each other. You know? No. But I think that's part of why I like him so much. And I don't like... I don't necessarily need to see, like, comic Peter Parker on screen. I don't need to see that. Well, because I don't think Tom Holland is that either. I think if he's anything... He's probably the closest to I think Tobey Maguire's the closest to that. In terms of, like... Tobey's probably closest to, like, the 60s. Yeah. yeah. Which is what Sam Raimi was a big fan of. That's so what that he makes was trying sense. to do, yeah. yeah. And it's why they didn't want to cast Tobey Maguire. And that, that was, like, the campy Spider-Man. Did I show you the... Um, he didn't, want to Magu- test, he didn't want to cast him? No, he had to make a, a screen test with Tobey Maguire. Did I show you that screen test? No. It's really funny because since it's a screen test and it's not going anywhere, they say fucking it like three times and it's pretty violent. <laughs> I love that. Yeah. Because <laughs> it's like, you know, it's a fucking uh, Sam Raimi. I'm glad he, at the very least Andrew Garfield has found his place in the hearts of many now. Yeah. In a well-written, well-made movie, I think he could really shine because not only is he a really good actor... His, he's he's a good Spider Man. He's me a wrong. very good yeah. Spider Man, and I think his iteration of Peter Parker, while not like necessarily accurate, is very interesting. Again, I said this: one of my favorite Spider Man moments. Period. Point blank. Is Andrew Garfield in the car with Jack when he's saving him, yes. and he's he's so good with kids. I think that's a beautiful <laughs> scene in an underrated movie that's been easily forgotten. I think that that's a top Spider Man moment for me, even now. Um, oh, something we didn't mention. I was getting to it, but then we got spiraling uh, with the Aunt May thing and the great power comes great responsibility. Tom Holland's Peter Parker, his defining moment, which is now Aunt May instead of Uncle Ben, comes from Peter wanting to do the right thing and Aunt May encouraging him and being his moral compass and Peter's being selfless instead of, in most versions, Peter's being selfish. And it's like a lesson learned. And he learns a lesson because uh, Uncle Ben dies because of his selfishness. he does allude to that in Civil War, though, when he's talking to Iron Man. Yeah, yeah, sort of. When he's like, when you could do the things I can... Then that's on you. And you don't help somebody, yeah, then that's on you. Yeah. So I think he did learn a lesson there, but I think Aunt May really solidified who he's going to become. Right. Almost through, like, positive reinforcement. Yeah. Because she helped him do the right thing, which is... If if I can do anything to prevent these people from dying and giving them a second chance, I'm going to do it. What about when Toby comes through the portal? What was your reaction to that? I mean, at that point, it's like... It was obviously going to yeah. happen, but like, how you did you feel? You know what? I kind of came around because I am not a nostalgia-driven person at all. Mm-hmm. Like, we watched... Uh, my wife, Sable, she was watching Spider-Man, original Spider-Man out there just now after we saw the movie she's like i gotta go back and watch that movie was like her child <laughs> yeah it was mine too don't get me wrong i watched it a million times okay. i'm sure you did too yeah, i did too you know but like i go back and i watch it and i'm like i remember this i remember fondly i loved it i still love it however it doesn't cloud my judgment like i'm still like this is a product of its of an era mm-hmm. and i don't think it's that great i think it's, it doesn't hold up. it doesn't hold up for me and i'm like that's fine i still have a lot of fun watching it because i had a lot of fun watching it as a kid the same reason i like batman forever and batman and robin they're not overall good movies but i love them i have a special spot in my heart for them so when i saw toby Maguire, i was like part of me was gonna be like yeah no no shit i'm not surprised <laughs> there he is in the slightest especially since the andrew garfield review already happened yeah but Part of me was like, yeah, applause. Good for you. No, like, it, good. They, they did it. They did it. They did it. <laughs> <laughs> they finally did it. They did it. I bought the ticket. I'm here. Here he is. You know, like, there he is in all his glory. Mm. 
credit where credit's due, man. Like, he made Spider-Man for an entire generation. Not all yeah. these people are Spider-Man comic readers. You know, I didn't read a Spider-Man comic till I was way older. So... Okay. So, Spider-Man is Tobey Maguire to some people. Yeah. And always will be. Yeah. And that's why people have, like, this weird hard-on for Tobey Maguire Spider-Man, even though he was the worst one. Exactly. I A hundred percent. A hundred percent the worst one. I went out there, by the way, she was watching the movie, and that I went out said, there. he's fine, but, he's, like, yeah, he's right. the worst one. I went out there uh, while he was delivering that line to MJ, and he's like... Uh, oh, boy. <laughs> no, and he's like... <laughs> Well, my friend Spider-Man told me that when he looks oh, at that you... that really long... Yeah. So fucking awkward. Like, you cringe inside of yourself. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? He goes on for like 30 he makes, seconds. He make, You want to make him be like the best version of yourself and blah, blah, blah. And that's what a man... God, God it's so weird. <laughs> oh, so we're talking about all their interactions. It felt very natural, organic... Yeah. Well made. I was so afraid it'd be clunky and cringy, and it could have been horrible. But it was yeah. fantastic. No, it was good. There was clearly a spider sense between Toby and Andrew when they saw each other because their first instinct was to like shoot a web at each other. <laughs> That's cool. Yeah. Um, so that was cool. Um, when they tried to talk to Peter on the roof of his school, and they each have like their own story to tell about loss. Yeah, and and we were kind of alluding to that as like their closure moments. Yeah. Yeah. That's when I cried. Oh, when... When they were each telling their stories. I, I got... Oh, it, I it was emotional. Cried. Because and, all that backstory is built in. You know it all. Yeah. If you've seen the movies, you yeah. know exactly what they're talking about. And we spent the, one of these cases, like, over a decade wondering, like, what happens. And the fact that he's like, oh, no, like, me and Mary Jane made it work after a while. I'm you like, said it's, it's still complicated, though. It's complicated. And I didn't see a wedding ring. Look, it's complicated, okay? It's, it's complicated. I guess, maybe, but, like, I mean, he he pretty much says that, like, they're together. They're, like, they're good. Yeah. Yeah. Honestly, like... It, it was nice to that know got that. got to me. Because those three movies spent a lot of fucking time. Yeah. Will they, won't they, MJ and Peter, whatever. Yeah. Well, too much time. But they made it work out. Like, years yeah. later, I really, really like that. And then you have Andrew, who, who's still pretty lonely. He's still yeah. blaming himself for the loss of Gwen. He talks about how after Gwen died... You know, he tried to do the Spider-Man thing for a while, but eventually he uh, he got rageful. He stopped pulling his punches. Yeah. And for Spider-Man, not pulling a punch means you probably kill the guy. But he's probably gone through the most. Emotionally, probably. Uh, maybe, maybe Tom, Tom at now, this point. But, but like, they're on, I think they're on equal playing field now, yeah. these two. And, and that's why he's like, you know, and he tells a story of grief. But I like that kind of like what's next for yeah. for Andrew Garfield and he kind of tells you because it's present day so many years have passed yeah, and apparently he's uh, pretty vengeful right now I think well I think he he said it not anymore right he's like I don't I think got, he said that he's like I stop okay all, I'm gonna, I'm all gonna he have said to re- was I stopped pulling my punches and he said I don't want you to end up like me yeah I'm gonna have to rewatch them because so this movie might change him a bit yeah but also the what he was alluding at is like the not pulling punches. It makes me think he's killing people now. There is actually a version of Spider-Man that does this. His story doesn't really end well. He ends up getting killed by cops. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah. But uh, that version of Spidey, uh, a lot of people refer to as like Last Stand Spider-Man, uh-huh. which he actually has a costume in the PS4 game. Oh, it's the one where it's like he's wearing the Spider-Man mask. He has like a leather jacket and he's wearing like yes, black yes, pants. Yes. I love the moment, though, where Toby and Andrew are talking, and Andrew's still kind of down in the dumps, and Toby says that he's amazing. When Andrew's like, oh, I'm lame. <laughs> yeah. And he's like, no, you're amazing. He's like, no, I, all I did was fight a guy in a rhino suit. <laughs> but, like, it's... Andrew seems to be, like, the most lonely one. Yeah. Because he's like, oh, no, this is great. I've always wanted brothers. I've always wanted... And he was so is, happy and he's to like, be with them. Yeah, and he's like, I love you guys. Yeah. Like, he's immediately like, yep, two other me, I'm like, all down for everything this. Everything that's happening right now, he's loving it. Yeah. The fact that, like, Toby's, like, you know, bringing him up because it just feels like that's yeah. what their characters well, would naturally do. It's like a do. nice feel-good scene. It's also a little bit of a joke with the play on words, like, you're that's amazing. What I'm saying, and that's his title, yeah. But, no, honestly, it was nice seeing somebody else say something positive about him because even in his own movies he's super hard on himself right but that's <laughs> what i'm saying it's it's a natural character moment because toby mcguire's is always upbeat he's very positive and he's yeah. very nice and he brings his friends up all the time like harry yeah. is a piece of shit and he's always like 
no, Harry. Like <laughs> Harry, I look up to you. <laughs> yeah, and he's always so nice to MJ, who's always down on herself, and she's he brings her up, which is why MJ likes him because he makes her feel good. Like it's what his character yeah. would naturally do. It's, it's very organic. The way he does in his own movies is a little cringy, but in this movie, it feels a lot better. It's better written, dude. <laughs> it was nice that they talked about the villains they fought. I was kind of hoping they would talk about villains that we hadn't seen. Oh. Just, like, hinting at more adventures that they had. Yeah. Well, again, I mean, if Spider-Man 4 we happened, had happened without us seeing it, yeah. like... Then Vulture happened. Mysterio, Mysterio happened. Mysterio happened. They could have had a little bonding moment about yeah. Mysterio. Uh, yeah. And my, my Andrew Mysterio would have was had like a idiot. Vulture, too, I think. Here's the thing, though. I feel like Andrew killed all of his villains. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Vulture? Yeah, I murdered him. <laughs> Doc Ock murdered him, too. I, I thought he was going to say something about him killing his best friend. Because he, Oh, yeah. They could have done that. They could have done that. Because he, he could have yeah. been like, yeah, oh, I had a best friend, too. He tried to kill me. I killed him. Well, he didn't he, kill him. You mean no, off I screen? Mean like off screen, like later. Yeah, yeah. yeah like you're right. you know, more yeah, allusions to like yeah. his uh, this dark path he went down. So when Andrew saves MJ, it was super predicted. Most of the internet yes. thought this was going to happen. I was hoping it would happen. So me, I was like, no, because it takes that moment away from Tom Holland. Again, I didn't want. I wanted Tom Holland to be the star of his own movie. But him and MJ get so many great moments together that I was perfectly fine with it at this point. I'm like, no, let Andrew do it. And the it fact, gives him a little bit of closure. Yes. And the fact that he got so emotional when he did it, because he's like, this is how you catch someone. That I was the second it. time I cried. Oh, because he cried. <laughs> when he broke down, I broke down. Oh, my God. That was <laughs> because good. he like he saved her. And I was like, oh, and then he asked, like, are you OK? And she's like, yeah. And then he starts crying. And then she's like, are you OK? <laughs> he had such a good moment. He has, he had the most <sighs> closure here, I think, because oh. of those bits. That like <laughs> gut punched me. Yeah. It was good. Again, and we talked about this in the Amazing Spider-Man 2 episode. Gwen's death carries so little weight because those movies got canceled. It could have been this defining moment like it was in the comics for movies to come. But, you know, we moved on. We came with Tom Holland right. or whatever. So it's, it's nice, nice to know, that we get it. And it's nice to know that those universes did, like, keep going. Yeah. It's, it's not, just nice to know that. It's not like they stopped happening. <laughs> they still happen. But well, again, they didn't get pruned by the TVA, so that's... Oh, sure. Thank God for Loki. Well, they're still they're separate. That's the whole point. They get pruned if they start coming together. Well, they would have been pruned here if Loki yes. didn't happen. <laughs> yeah, this, none of this would have happened if if the TVA was still around. Yeah, and all this goes to show why it's better that they were not de-aged because they have to impart this wisdom as Peter Parker's who lived this shit, yep. experienced it, and know better. Because yeah. at the end of the movie, Tom Holland, Peter Parker, Spider Man One, right? Peter One. <laughs> Uh yeah, he's gonna kill Green Goblin. Oh yeah, he loses it at this point. He, he does, and it's Tobey Maguire who stops him. And at first, I was like, "No, he should come to this decision on his own. This should be a character moment." It still is, though. It works out very well because he just needed that push from Toby. You yeah. know what I mean? Toby didn't say anything to him. He just stopped them from literally stabbing. Well, him. they were they sat on the sidelines. They just watched the fight. For a while. And then when it was going to happen, he came He in. stepped in when he felt like he needed to. Yeah. Yeah. And it works because he's the only Spider-Man who's learned this lesson. Yeah. Because he says it. He said, I wanted a man dead so bad and I got it. He didn't kill him. Remember, the guy fell. Right. But he got his wish. And he said it didn't help. Doesn't help at all. And Andrew was saying that he did start killing people and he's like, I don't want you to be like me. Yeah. Because clearly it's not helping him. Right. I like that Toby kind of stopped and was like. You're a Peter Parker. Like, I know what you know, and you're about to do the wrong thing. Yeah. And then Tom kind of changes his mind. Yep. And then Andrew throws him the cure, and he... Yeah. Right after he stabs Peter. <laughs> right <laughs> after he stabs Peter, too. Yeah. Toby's like, I've been stabbed before. You've been stabbed by that very same thing, by the way. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that same fucking blade. <laughs> so, yeah, that was the all the Spider-Man's interactions with each other. And then, like, they have, like, their nice little goodbye at the end. They have a genuine hug. Yeah. And we barely talked about it, but like the fucking um, science lab, all of that was amazing. That was great. That was great interactions all and around. And we actually see Tobey Maguire as Peter Parker doing something smart. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like he says he's smart and everyone says he's smart and he's got his papers. Like they're late. <laughs> he's planning on writing it. He's planning it. on writing it. But yeah, he, he's still a Peter Parker. He's a smart guy. Yeah. I love that Andrew Garfield's like, I've already cured this guy. I got the algorithm. Yeah. He's like, yeah. So it's not a big deal. And I just look at him. He's like. It's not a big deal. All right, let's do it. <laughs> um, he used a water bottle as a yeah. cylinder, graduated cylinder or whatever. Tell those. And funny. then um, 
all of the Spider-Man's interactions with their respective villains too are good. Like when Andy's yeah. like, "Hey Max, I missed you, buddy." Oh, 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 here's the here's some good closure is Electro and Andrew Garfield. Yeah. When he gets depowered, he gets the Stark reactor pulled away. Just to like breeze through this, like all the villains' motivations make perfect sense. Like I said, Sandman just wants to go home. He just wants, to, yeah. He's not I on want any to one side. Fuck off so bad. The only thing he wanted to do was push that button. He's like, the happiest moment of my life is when I just like fucked off at the end of Spider Man Three. Can we just do that? <laughs> yep. He's like the guy who's just like at work. Who's like, can we just end this meeting? Was it necessary? Can we go can, home? Like, just it's over. Okay, cool. I'm out. This could have been an email. <laughs> <laughs> this could have been an email. <laughs> That's him. Yeah. But also, like, he's got his daughter, but he's willing to at least give it a shot. Like, if he could be cured, then it solves his problems. Yeah. Even back home. So he's down to, like, chill or whatever. Electro finds an arc reactor. Makes perfect sense. The biggest battery in the MCU. And Electro, who needs to be recharging all the time. <laughs> Boom. Like, it's a match made in heaven. It makes perfect sense. Yeah. Some of that hand waving, lamp shading uh, we always talk about, though, is like, when uh, he comes to this universe and he's telling he's handsome, he's got a good haircut and they make yeah. fun of him for his teeth. He's like, I look nice. good now. He's like, I'm handsome and cool and suave. I don't want to go back there. Yeah, he's like, I like how I look in this universe. <laughs> yeah, Jamie Foxx is so fucking cool and dapper and good looking. Why the hell would you turn him into what yep. you did in Amazing Spider-Man 2? And then <laughs> Connors was like, yeah, last time I saw you, you had a comb over and messed up teeth. <laughs> <laughs> I already said I didn't think that was him. He also had like the least amount of play was Lizard. Yeah, he, he was just there he was kind of just there yeah, i was kind of like really even his like he's smart he they could use them for stuff his scene looked a little weird like it looked like it was just ripped from amazing spider-man that's why i thought yeah. they used archival footage they might have and just had him for voiceover but even in some places he didn't sound like himself i kind of still don't believe that's him maybe maybe they couldn't get him for whatever reason i'm gonna have to look at the credits because yeah. wikipedia says it's him which is why i buy it i mean it could have been just voice work but no, like the footage looked archi- like it, when you actually see him, it looked like ripped from uh, like when he got cured the first time. Yeah, around. exactly. Yeah. It looked kind of looked like in Zack Snyder's Justice League. There's some Superman footage that they just repurposed from other movies, and they just kind of like they flipped it, they recolored it, yeah, they it made like, it look different. Maybe this will be different enough. Yeah, but it's the same footage. They didn't, yeah. they didn't bring back Henry Cavill. Is my point. Right. That's kind of what I thought it was. But they made fun of him for. Being in love with lizards and fucking yeah. wanting to turn He's everybody like, oh, into I a got lizard. A over for you. He's like, what? You're going to turn me into a lizard? Yeah. <laughs> They're beautiful. <laughs> Why don't you like about lizards? <laughs> lizards are fucking awesome. <laughs> <laughs> you can't even find a lizard because they're an apex predator. Yeah. First, you'd have to catch a lizard. And why? <laughs> how would you even do that? <laughs> uh, let's go to the chat real quick. Uh, I love the bit at the end where Peter 2 is holding Peter 3. You're in so much pain right now, aren't you? So much pain. It's <laughs> almost like they came over here and they got some proven MCU humor. You know? Yeah. That's an MCU joke. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I like the small connection between Electro and Sam and when they're talking about how they got powers and Electro says, we got to be more careful where you fall. They're all making fun of like, oh yeah, I fell in a vat of, uh, uh, of eels or whatever. I fell into a super collider. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that'll happen. <laughs> yeah. You got to watch out where you fall. And then uh, when Andrew's like, oh, Max was such a sweet guy before he fell into a vat of electric eels. And Toby's like, that'll do it. That'll do it. Yep. <laughs> Thanks, Philly. Uh, in the chat. I also like that when Doc Ock holds the arc reactor, he's like, God damn it, this is the thing I wanted to make. The power of the sun in the palm of my hand. <laughs> Was there no Tony Stark in your universe? Because he did it and you fucking couldn't. Yeah. And it was a side project to shut the hippies up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and he made it in a cave with a box of scraps. <laughs> um, cool. Do you want to get into costumes? I would love to get into costumes. Here's my favorite thing about Spider-Man costumes in the MCU is that it kind of like... Doesn't matter. Don't get too attached to them because there's so many. And I love that. Like Tom Holland's wore, worn like 10 different costumes. Yeah. Apparently That's a lot great. of people don't really like them though. <laughs> I love most of them. And specifically because like they don't last that long. Like I like that they fit whatever he's doing. Yeah. Like I don't love Iron Spider. I think it's kind of like it's CGI and like. It doesn't feel real. It does a lot of the work for him. Yeah. But it's cool because it's not used. It's used sparingly. Also, like, that was the only suit he could have used to even stand a chance against Thanos. Right, yeah, yeah, yeah. like in space. It works in Avengers. Absolutely. Yes. But, like, 
it's used sparingly for the most part, especially yeah. in his movies. I love the first suit. I love the red and black suit. Again, he designed the red and black suit himself using that mach- using like the Stark 3D printer thing. The spider monkey suit is cool because it's only in like one scene. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like if that was Spider-Man, they're like, all right, he's wearing this suit all the time. I'd be like, no. But because it's in one scene, I'm like, yes, variety. Let's do different things, you know? Yeah. So, and that's something like the other Spider-Man don't do really no, they like, at all. their suit. And that's it. All occasions, one suit. Sometimes it's black. Sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> if there's a Venom <laughs> on yeah. it. So in this, you've got the red and black suit. You've got the iron spider suit. You've got, shit, there's paint on my suit. Let me flip it backwards. <laughs> Gold and black. <laughs> it's inside out. And there's duct tape cell phone on my chest, too. <laughs> That was funny. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't see that in any of the promos. So I was like, oh, wow. We have the Andrew Garfield suit. Yeah, obviously on the other characters. I'm talking about like, oh, uh, like Peter's. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What am I missing? Oh, the integrated suit is what it's called. I think it's my favorite suit. It's the red and black suit with a little bit of the nanobots. Okay. Yeah, I yeah, that one was good. It's just, yeah, it kind of like fits over him. And I called it when we were talking about speculation. I'm like this. It looks like it's a little bit of both. Yeah. You know, actually, it was on a Marvel. It was on a Funko Pop. Okay. That too. <laughs> and then we have uh, his suit at the very end of the movie. So, what do you think? Because most people have a big heart on for that kind of thing. Uh, I'm fine with it. I like that all the people that called him, like, Iron Man Jr. and shit can shut the fuck up now. Because now he's, like, he's literally sewing his own suit and doing his own thing. I mean, yeah, yeah. I, I think, see I that. I think the blue is a little too bright. The blue is so bright and so light colored. And it's it seemed very shiny. I loved the way the first suit looked. I thought that's the perfect Spider-Man suit. Mm -hmm. I kind of hate how comic accurate some things are going to. And I've said this before on the show. Yeah, because you didn't like um, the new Captain America suit. I liked it up until the fucking sock on his face. (laughs) He needs a helmet. Like, if anything, to protect his head. He's yeah. not super powered. He's not. No, right. Like Steve wore a helmet and he's super powered. You need a fucking helmet. You're flying around. Steve wasn't flying around, dude. You need a helmet. <laughs> and he would look better with a helmet. Like even in white. Like yeah, it something, doesn't, something a little more solid. It looking. doesn't need to be a one to one translation from the comics. Yeah. I don't think that works. I think you need to take inspiration from the comics. I think they should resemble very closely, but it should also look like something that would exist in the real world. So like. Captain America from the Avengers. We all agree that wasn't very good. No. Because it went too much into that comic book look. All his other suits are amazing. Literally yeah. all of them are great. Because it feels like a real kind of tactical soldiery suit that also would be kind of like, it looks like Captain no. America. I don't think this new suit looks bad in any way, though. Oh, we, we barely also, saw it. Yeah, we got like a glimpse of it. It does seem like he's just kind of making a suit with whatever he has on hand now, though, which is almost nothing. He probably went to Joanne and got some fabric and yeah. made a suit. That's what it looks like. I'm Look, I'm fine with it so long as it continues to evolve. If it's I'm like, sure it will. It's if, not going to stay static. If it's like, this is his suit for the next three movies, oh, God, no, please, <laughs> please don't. I won't buy the next movie. He's already like, well, <sighs> yeah, I ripped up because I made it myself. We have reason to believe that he might get a black suit soon. That's true. But still, like... <laughs> I would like for it to continue continue to evolve, and I would like for him to keep on putting his technology in it. What if he's creating stuff to put into his suit now that he doesn't have Stark tech, you know? Right. Because it's kind of like in the PS4 game where he's constantly tinkering with his suit, and then, oh my god, Otto Octavius helped me, and now I've got a little bit more tricks, and he's constantly putting more things in his suit. I want to see some of that, you know? Yeah. I, anyway. I wouldn't mind that at all. I love also, like, the webbing which is almost like inverse webbing. It almost looks like it goes down in his regular suits, you know, instead of up. Yeah. And now it's just kind of like black because he stitched it on from Joanne Fabrics, you know? Yep. <laughs> He's doing what he has to do. Uh, he doesn't have access to Stark technology anymore. Looking for sponsorships, Joanne. Hit me up. I go in that <laughs> store all the time with, with my dog because they're they're pet friendly at Joanne. Just so you know out there, people. Kaya loves it there. And then obviously, big step up for Electro. Big step up yeah. for um, Green, Green Goblin. Goblin. Doc Ock's the same. Doc Ock, he's literally wearing the same, the same trench coat. Lizard doesn't really have a costume. I was really hoping at one point uh, Andrew Garfield put on a trench coat. I was like, please, Lizard, pick this up and put it on. It would be so <laughs> far-fetched for it to happen, but I'm like, come on, give him the trench coat, you know? <laughs> or lab coat. Sorry, sorry, lab yeah. coat. Yeah, 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 sorry. Because yeah, yeah. you had just said trench coat when you yeah. said it got stuck in my head. Do-do. Sandman looks the same. I'll say CGI is not, wasn't super great on him, I thought. 
on when, Sandman? When he was up close talking, you know? It looked like Spider-Man 3, which isn't great because it looked like an old movie. Because 2007. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but, I mean, six, it didn't seven. distract me at all. Okay. I was like, that's Sandman. <laughs> yeah. All right. <laughs> Go to the chat real quick. Uh, Peter Parker talking about the Avengers. Is that a band? Sam and brushing sand off the couch when he sat down was really funny. I didn't <laughs> notice that. He tries to brush the sand off, but it doesn't do. He just puts more sand on the couch. It's like, oh, sorry. <laughs> God, I go back. There's also, oh, you know what? I think I went to the bathroom. I went to the bathroom twice. Like an how, idiot. How do you do that every movie? I'm very well hydrated. Okay. Anyway, <laughs> I drink like a gallon of water a day. Cool. Oh, let's do some quick Easter egg rundown. Uh, and then I've got, I want to talk some about music and then I think we're done. Oh, and then post credits. Sable, my wife, she's not here, but she had some thoughts and she wanted me to share them. Uh, two things that she caught. Number one, you know, when the, everyone's just kind of like calmly hanging out at the end, it's three Spider-Man and, uh, Doc Ock. Yeah. And then they're attacked by a uh, green goblin. Yeah. When Toby jumps, he does the same side warty jump that he does in the burning building of his movie. Yes. He does. That's it's almost exact. Great detail. That's a great detail. I didn't notice she picked that up. Um, she also says the funeral scene at the end of the movie from Spider-Man and from No Way Home are very similar. They both start up in the same way from the sky, panning down trees. It's actually a tilt. Anyway, I think Amazing Spider-Man does that as well. Yeah, I think a it's lot like of, a trope in these movies. It's almost like they're yeah they're calling back to the these tropes of like yeah we loss gotta, yeah loss yeah we're 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 back at a graveyard. Back at a little funeral thing. Yeah. I think this is the first time uh, Tom Holland has been at a cemetery, though. Oh, um, oh all the figures are seen in the sky when the spell's about to, like, break the universe. I noticed Craven, Rhino, and Scorpion. Craven, Rhino, Scorpion. There's somebody that people are saying looks like Black Cat. Okay. There was a lot of figures, though, that you don't get, like, a good look at them because they're, like, not in focus at all. They're just off to the side or whatever. But those were the big ones, and... They're already talking about a Craven movie. We already have a Scorpion. Yeah. Oh, Rhino. Rhino was there too. And it was like a comic accurate Rhino. I said that. Oh. <laughs> Man. We didn't talk about them talking about Toby's uh natural webs. Yeah, that was fun. <laughs> and it's one of those jokes that like everybody saw coming. Yeah. And I'm still glad and they the, did the, it. Like they're it worked. so like it... <laughs> they're kind of grossed out and also amazed by it. <laughs> yeah. Oh, Flash's book was called Flashpoint. Yep, saw that. <laughs> I don't know if this is an Easter egg, but it is an interesting fact. Uh, it seems like a lot of like the overall plot of this movie, with like the whole like forgetting who Spider Man is, his identity and stuff, is yeah. taken from a comic story arc that a lot of people hate. Yeah, it's um, the one more day. Yeah, yeah. With uh, where but in it's that Mysterio. One, or no, sorry, it, not Mysterio. He um, makes a deal Mephisto. with Mephisto after Doctor yeah. Strange can't help him. Right. That basically erases his entire marriage with Mary Jane. And it's so that he can save Aunt May, who got, she got shot after Peter's identity was revealed during Civil War, which was another comic book story arc that a lot of people hated. And both have become very successful movies. Hmm. Cool. Last thing before we talk about the post credits is the music I thought was really good. It was. Same composer. It's uh, Michael uh, Giacchino. Who also did the music for Doctor Strange. Yes, and there's a lot of good Doctor Strange uh, cues in this. And there was a good little mixture of the Spider-Man theme and the Doctor Strange, like the harpsichords from the Doctor Strange theme, too. Playing some... Yeah, yeah. 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 Uh, I love... There was great musical cues whenever we saw um, Tobey Maguire, and whenever he was talking, they played some of his themes from his movies by What's-His-Face, the guy I don't like, what's his name? Oh, 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 oh. Danny Elfman. Danny Elfman, yeah, thank you. <laughs> um... They reused a theme from The Amazing Spider-Man. I don't the, know if you noticed the this. The first one, I think. Yes. Yeah. It's like the main theme in this movie. Which is good. I'm glad they used that one and not the uh, so Hans Zimmer you, one. Yes, because that sucked. But I'm glad you noticed this because that's yep. something we loved about that movie was the music. Yeah. And as I'm listening to him, I'm like, I know this theme. It was from the beginning of the movie when he's, uh, it was like his main theme. It's his main theme. They played yeah. it the I whole thing. I think on the, on the soundtrack, it's called like Young Peter. Um, it's played a lot because I had to, I'll get into a, a bit of an argument about this. Yeah, sure. <laughs> they, uh, it's played a couple times. It's also in, I think it's called, I can't see you anymore. Yeah. It's probably on that one too. And, and a bunch of other ones. It, like, it's, it it's shows throughout up the throughout the, yeah. Yeah. I almost didn't understand why they would do that because it's not his music, but I get the feeling it's one of these, what's kind of called the tent music problem in a lot of times in movies the score gets made last, right? Yeah. Because the movie has to be cut 
for the composer to then put the music on it so it lasts the length that it needs to last, right? Right. So when a director is cutting a movie, he'll often use music from a different movie. It's called temp music, like temporary music, as a cut to be like, yeah, music goes here. And then he might use that as notes for the composer to be like, hey, this is kind of the feel that I want, something like this. Right. And composers hate that. There's a video, uh, I might link it below if I can find it. If I can't, then whatever, fuck off. But it's a, it's like a round table discussion with a bunch of composers, yeah. uh, including Danny Elfman. And they're all like, and I think Hans Zimmer's there too. Danny Elfman's a great singer, by the way. Really? Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> he does the He's singing voice fan? for Jack Skellington in Nightmare Before Christmas. No way. And I also, he was the like lead singer of a band, that. Oingo yeah. Boingo. I, okay, that I knew. That yes. I knew. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, they're, they're in a round table. They were talking about like, oh, do you hate tent music? And they're all like, fucking hate it. Stop doing it. Because the problem is the directors get so attached to the song, the piece of music that they're using because they hear it over and over again. They've already made that association to that scene. So, everything they hear, that's, that's not That's what that. they want. Yeah. Yeah. And then so, when they get the score back, they're like, oh, I don't like this. Even though we as the audience are only ever going to hear that. We're never going to hear what the temp music was. Right. There are other... I'll link this other video that's really interesting about temp music. There are cases where you can see not see, I guess hear, what the temp music was because they're so similar and they've led to like litigation, uh, like lawsuits <laughs> because you've basically, you're basically plagiarizing. Uh, plagiarizing it. Yeah, the music. And so this seems like one of those cases where they get away with it because they own that music. Yes. Sony owns both. So they're like, yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if the director, John Watts, was using that score, like James Horner's score, as temp music in certain places. And then and he tells Giacchino, he's like, I kind of want this, you know, can you, what can you do with this? Cause it's the same exact melody. It's the same exact notes, but the kind of like the structure is slightly different in a lot of places. Yeah. But the theme is exactly it, the same. It seems purposeful though. But that's the other thing. Is it intentional? Because it's almost kind of like that was his, mu- his music and an amazing Spider-Man for Andrew Garfield's loss. I think that's absolutely why they did what it. What they play for his relationship with, uh, uncle ben and then with gwen stacy and then and here we've got another spider-man kind of going through the same thing and just like the characters in this that are all variants of each other the music is a variant of itself yeah like is that what they were going for i could see that i like both yeah i like that idea you know yeah but uh i love that theme i thought it was criminally underused in the next movie <laughs> so i'm glad that it gets some more play like yeah. it's 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 amazing they it's a great did, they theme. did the good version of it yeah it's yeah. A, that is good music let's get into the post credits we got two the first one is eddie brock venom being a bozo he never left mexico he's like oh yeah let's go find this spider-man guy and he goes to the bar and he just sits there with fucking danny rojas from <laughs> ted lasso <laughs> and he, i guess he just got a whole recap on the events of the mcu yeah and, <laughs> and he's like taking notes and he's like I'm so fucking confused I'm not ready for this universe and he fucking leaves it because the entire events of the movie happen right then what an idiot <laughs> and when he when he disappears he just goes oh <laughs> and what? it's right after he says senor you have to pay <laughs> that's funny <"Whoa." laughs> But then we get a little tiny like piece of venom that stayed behind a little symbiote yeah. that now has all the knowledge of this universe symbiote. sorry I said symbiote <laughs> that movie fucked me. And it wasn't again. It wasn't the movie. It was a trailer uh, for Venom. Oh yeah. Yeah. So so this Venom has knowledge of all the events, and the last action he was going to do was to go to New York and talk to Spider Man. So it's true. This little symbiote might have a mission. Okay. Here's the thing. What is the end game here for Sony and Venom? What well, are they? What's the plan for Sony? This might be the best of both worlds. I think they can do their Venom three however the fuck they want now in their universe. And they have this Venom in the MCU now that they're probably going to make money off of. Because... That Marvel can do whatever okay, they want we talked about this in our Venom episode a lot. <laughs> My complaint was they didn't do the Venom story. And it's fine to not always do the comic origin. But the right. thing is, Venom is a product of Spider-Man. That's why he looks like Spider-Man. That's why he has Spider-Man's powers. And that's why the Spider-Sense doesn't work against him. Because he right. spent a lot of time on peter parker and he took and he, a lot of his traits attributes exactly yeah. so when he goes on someone else who's muscular and angry and eddie brock that turns into venom right those are the two parts of venom right yep. so you skip that by not having spider-man be part of his origin right and they kind of get around with it because instead of like you know he shoots his tendrils 
but it's not an answer to the webbing. It's just something right. that he does. But what he left behind is what I'm assuming is like an offspring, kind of like what happened with Carnage. Yeah. So this could be a fresh start well, for a Venom in the MCU, and okay. we could get that Spider-Man story. But then what the fuck are we doing with Tom Hardy then? Because now it's like, okay, cool. Now you're giving me what I want, which is a brand new, fresh Venom right. that's going to be made the proper way through Spider-Man, probably. But like... Then why did we watch two Venom movies is all I'm saying. Oh, because those are in the Venom universe, which may or may not be related to Morbius, which Sony is trying to turn into a prophet. And if they bring Andrew Garfield back, maybe it'll be in that universe. But then, like, what? (laughs) I'm just so fucking confused as to, like, what the plan is with Tom Hardy. Because I had made peace with this. I was like, you know what? And again, we talked about that movie a lot. But I... uh, Venom 2, not Venom 1. Uh, Actually, we talked about both, so it doesn't matter. Um... (laughs) <laughs> I was like, I'm okay with Tom Hardy as Venom. I don't like Tom Hardy as Eddie Brock. He's a fucking, he's, an he's a bum. He's, he's, a, a, he's a bozo. He's a bozo he, <laughs> all around. And this end credit scene was the perfect just picture of this Eddie Brock. Just an idiot in a bar, drunk. Again, the reason we don't have a quote unquote sinister six is because this bozo just sat in a bar the entire movie trying to take notes on background information. <laughs> He gets transferred to another universe, and the first thing he does is just goes to a bar and just talks to a bartender Look, for hours, I it's assume. It's probably what I would do, but I'm no, not... it seems like a very everyman uh, thing yeah. to do, which I guess... I'm not a big hero nor villain, is what I'm saying. But there's Like, why did Venom let him just sit here and talk? <laughs> yeah. Again, I was already... I had already made peace with this Tom Hardy thing, and now I'm like... So are we going to get a completely different Venom now? Are they going to meet up and have an in, in a Venom-verse movie? I will like, say, there was something kind of charming with how stupid he was in the scene, though. <laughs> Especially the tele... Just, whoa. <laughs> Here's something I might not hate. You keep Tom Hardy voicing Venom. I'd be totally fine with that, because he does a good job with that, And actually. it's a different actor, maybe, as Eddie Brock. Or, or hear me out, hear me out, hear me out. A variant of Eddie Brock? Who is also played by Tom Hardy. Maybe not as dumb. But yeah, a smart, competent one who's good at his job and he's like, maybe, I don't know. Maybe like, he works for the new Daily Bugle. Yeah, why not? And you can say he can still be played by Tom Hardy. It's just a different take. And maybe he believes Jonah about Spider-Man being a piece of shit. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Mm. It'd be confusing, but I'm like, whatever, retcon. Your Make boss it. is a bad guy. Yeah, he wouldn't say stupid shit like that. He wouldn't that- show up to a TV interview in a fucking sweater and like... Five o'clock shadow. And sweaty. <laughs> yeah, and greasy <laughs> and weird and asking dumb questions. And mumbling. And yeah. God, he's so stupid. He's like the worst reporter. <laughs> and no one believes. But he had in his own universe. TV show? Bullshit. <laughs> fucking bullshit. Again, he's supposed to be like the fucking Anderson Cooper. Is he like a Pulitzer no. Prize winner? No. <laughs> bullshit. Oh, I forgot to talk about one of the most beautiful scenes in the movie. Right after Aunt May dies, when Jonah's talking about, like, you know, like, the loss and, like, how this is all Spider-Man's fault and Spider-Man's just standing in front of the giant screen just watching it. Mm-hmm. And it's raining and yeah. oh, and he looks defeated. That was such a beautiful shot. I think my favorite shot was the three Spider-Man landing in front of the full moon. And oh, that was running really fucking swinging. cool, too. But. I was like, that's <laughs> that's a screensaver but right just, there. Like, that shot, I'm just like, damn, that like that's like this movie in a nutshell right yeah. now. Also, he's uh, he's Alex Jones. There's a there's oh, absolutely. He's even pushing the supplements. The supplements. I was like, oh, there he is. <laughs> it was it was actually really funny that they did yeah, that. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> um, they almost made Jonah unlikable in this movie. Almost. I kind of that's kind of the point, right? B- but he's yeah. not always supposed to be like I, sympathetic, right? I guess not not sympathetic, but like like love to hate him type. They came very close to making me just straight up like, damn, you're a piece of shit, though. <laughs> yeah. Well, also, uh, you know, Jonah, he's he looks the same. Oh, yeah. He's a variant. He's a variant. And we've seen in Loki, like, you can look exactly the same or you can look different. Yeah. We had multiple uh, Lokis played by Tom Hiddleston. Yep. So. And there was a Jonah and Andrews universe. We just never saw him. What? He got an email from him. Oh, that's right. Yeah, there, there was a J. There Jonah was a Jameson. J. Jonah Jameson. Ah, that's right, that's right. That's right. Okay, and then the next post credit scene is basically a sizzle reel for Doctor Strange and yeah. the Multiverse of Madness. Which looks really fucking cool, actually. <laughs> Looked super fucking cool. Don't think Spider-Man is... I mean, is it, who knows? It's Again, possible. Spider-Man still has that one movie, but it would also, defeat the purpose. this is a Sam Raimi movie. What if we get Tobey Maguire just for the hell of it? That'd be weird. <laughs> That'd be weird. No, it looks cool. Um, 
the, we don't have too much to go off. Of. We know Mordo's back probably as Mordo. It seems like he's the villain, but also we see another Doctor Strange that may be the Strange Supreme, Supreme Strange, whatever yeah. it's called from What If. What If, yeah. A lot of people say maybe it's not him. It might not be. There's like it, another variant because it, it is seems, multiversey. We might right? see a few Doctor Stranges. Yeah. And also that Doctor Strange is like not that evil. Not anymore. Not anymore. But also like maybe he is. I don't know. Like we'll see, I guess. We'll, we'll find out. But it's an interesting precedent to set because what if really did feel disconnected from the MCU? Not only because it's animated, mostly because it's animated. Mostly because it's animated. But it's also kind of like the whole point of what if it's like it's not this universe. Like it doesn't right. it has no consequences. But now we have the possibility of crossing over. Yeah. So now it could be yeah. relevant. We could see Captain Carter. Yeah. I would not mind seeing uh seeing her Haley again. Atwell. Yeah. yeah, Haley Atwell again. I actually really like the Agent Carter show that nobody yeah. seemed to watch. I watched both seasons. <laughs> uh the second one wasn't very good. But the second like... one was okay. First season was fantastic. First though. one was good. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. All that looks super interesting. I'm trying to think what else we saw. Obviously, uh, Wong, who is the Sorcerer Supreme on a, technic- on a technicality. <laughs> I'm sure that'll go back to Doctor Strange eventually. eventually. Yeah. Um, we also have Wanda. Yep. They mentioned Westview. We knew she was going to be in there. Yeah, we already knew she was going to be in but there. But I think what's interesting is like we kind of expected them to be at odds with each other. But he's going to and her he, for help. And he's right off the bat. He's like, I don't give a shit about Westview. That's not important. What's important is multiverse and you have to help me. Yeah. So that's going to be now super fun. Do you think, think Wanda will end up being an antagonist here because she was up to some what looked like some dark shit at the end of WandaVision? I don't know. They might just be working together. Mm. She's she's just trying to find her kids. That's I think yeah. that's the only thing she cares about. And she might see this as Maybe an opportunity. Agatha. To, what about Agatha? She's getting her own show. She's getting her own show. She might be in it. She's stuck in Westview. She Westview is right now. But she's also getting her own show. So we we know she's going to come out of that. Yeah. So the possibilities are endless. I love how phase four seems to be making a lot out of a little when we were like, I remember being like, oh, this seems like a bunch of small projects. Yeah. But I'm like, no, this is big stuff. You know, we uh, we did get a shot of another hero that's going to be introduced in this movie too, uh, America Chavez. We see her from she, behind. What? Where? You see, uh, you see like her jacket with the star in the back for like a second. And that in the sizzle, movie or in, in the, the sizzle reel? She's going to show up in the movie. Supposedly. Oh, I think I, I think I knew that. And I think I forgot. Or maybe I didn't know that. Wait, she's another hero. Um, does she go by Miss America? Is that... Miss America is her super name. Yes. Thank oh. you, Philly. Cool. But that's another one of the young heroes. So this could also be gearing towards like a Young Avengers type thing. No doubt. Yeah. No doubt. Yeah. Cool. Is that everything? I think so. Did we cover everything in this movie? That we I mean, not everything in this movie, but like... Uh, cool. Scooby Doo, this shit, which still doesn't make sense. <laughs> well, I'm not convinced he's really watched Scooby Doo and he knows but what it means. He's a very cultured man. His movie about shows jazz. Up. <laughs> <laughs> <Ba-da-ba-ba>. He loves <laughs> jazz. Yo, Jerry Seinfeld would love him. <laughs> All right, guys, that's it for us. Thank you for listening. Thank you for subscribing. Thank you to that piano dude for a musical intro. Uh, make sure you leave a rating and review on Apple Podcasts. Please tell a friend. And if you told a friend, thanks for telling a friend. You can find us on Instagram at Films from the Phantom Zone. And you can find us on Twitter if you want to argue with us. We're at Films from PZ. I love to tweet people. Uh, we're also at TikTok at Films from the Phantom Zone. People will be arguing with each other over there. So, yeah, that's a thing. <laughs> um, all these episodes are available on YouTube. If that's how you like consuming your podcast, we are on there. I am so behind on putting things on YouTube, but I will get caught up, I promise. <laughs> Don't have Apple, but I left a five star on Spotify. I didn't know you could do that on Spotify. So thank you. I didn't I know really that appreciate I should that. do yeah. that right now. Oh, God. Birdo. Dude. I didn't know you could do it. We just learned that you can leave ratings on Spotify. So, yes, please. Again, wherever you can leave ratings. Because ratings I also reviews. use Spotify. But uh, we live stream all these episodes. If you want to be a part of the show, you want to talk to us, hang out with us while we're recording these podcasts talking about these movies live you can do that all of this is on twitch monday nights when we don't have a movie to talk about we're probably playing a game we might pick up some more days i've been trying to think about that i might do wednesday what are you doing wednesday i'm not doing anything on wednesday i might stream on wednesday <laughs> hey, you, you work f- you can finish that spider-man game yeah i can get maybe halfway through it wednesday's <laughs> gonna be your gaming night 
You guys. <laughs> Birdo needs his gaming nights too. We gotta give him a gaming night. <sighs> but uh, yeah, we've got a chat going on. We've got Philly the J here in the chat. He's been hanging out with us all night. You wanna be as cool as him. Hang out with us. Tell us things that we didn't see. Look stuff up for us. Be our guy in the chair. Be our Ned. That would be great. So thanks a lot. Philly, thanks to anyone else who pops up into the chat. If you want to support the show, you can do that on Patreon. Uh, We are going to hopefully get a little community and then maybe we can do little fun things. Yeah, I don't don't know. I don't know. Play a game. We'll figure it out. Do do a special stream. Jackbox. Yeah, yeah. Jackbox. That could be fun. That could be really fun. But anyway, guys, that's it for us. We will see you next week. We don't have a movie planned out right now, but after this comes out, there is a Christmas special coming your way. We already recorded it. It was a lot of fun. That's going to come out on Christmas Eve. We've got so, a New Year's one planned for, like, awards, maybe? We're still kind of iffy on that not one. Not New Year's as in, like, January 1st. Oh, no, like, but, but like, to, in like, the next year, to bring in yeah, 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 the yeah. new year. In the next year, we will celebrate all the hard work we did and do a Phantom Awards show. Yeah. Where we can talk about every movie retrospectively and uh, kind of <laughs> pick our favorite different categories. How does that sound? Sounds fun. Cool. So, yeah. So, we will see you then. That's it for me. <laughs> We're saying <laughs> bye. I know, but I'm, I lost my train of thought. It happens so often. Yeah. So, that's it for us, guys. Thank you so much. And I will see you uh, in the new year. Yeah. Happy New Year, guys. And Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. And watch Hawkeye. Happy Holidays. Happy if Hawkeye's Hanukkah. good enough, we might just review Hawkeye. Like the series as a whole? I don't know. Maybe, maybe not. That seems like work. Daredevil's canon. Oh my god, Daredevil. So go watch, go rewatch Daredevil. That's everyone's homework assignment. Uh, all right, cool. We will see you guys later. Thank you and bye. Bye.